Hey, hi folks. Hey, good evening, good morning. Hello, hello. Hi, hello. Hey, everyone. <clears throat> Posted the meeting notes. And hey, Klaus, are you joining video? Uh, yeah, I joined you with the uh, uh about two years ago. Oh, interesting! I didn't know that. <laughs> Good timing. <laughs> Yes, yes. Before, <laughs> before the stock get crazy. <laughs> well, it looks like we don't have the uh, presenters, so we can just give it a couple more minutes. If not, we might have to just close and give the time back. You can probably try reaching out to them on Slack or GitHub. Yeah, and does anybody know their? I didn't actually reach out to them initially, so I'm not. Yeah, me neither. So that I don't have to. Daniel, do you know about this? I'm I'm trying the Kubernetes uh, chat um Slack. Let's see. If you could try the CNCF one. Yep, try it. Hey, hey. Hey, Adele. Good to see you here. Same, same. Good to see you all. So we're trying to get the presenters to join the meeting. We haven't been able to reach out to them. But I, th I think we have uh, a lot of folks on the call, but I think we, we might be able to use some of the time if anybody has anything that they'd like to bring up. Any any takeaways from KubeCon probably? Yeah, that's a good one. I mean, we can, we can talk about it, but openly. All right, I think, uh, yeah. 
uh, yeah, so just open it up to everybody if they would like to bring up anything about KubeCon or anything that they'd like to see in tag runtime going forward. Um, anything about the booth and at KubeCon, uh, anything related to the tag runtime projects, uh, some projects that we like we, we should actually be reaching out to uh, to present or any other things that we can address. Uh, Ricardo, I've got a question. Um, uh, first, I want to say thank you so much for jumping on the Wasm Cloud incubation uh, proposal. Uh, I saw you jumping in and um, helping us to get that across the line. Um, but really, I wanted to um, do a better job of showing up and asking, you know, how can I help? Um, and uh, are there other ways that, you know, when I look at the talk, um, you know, the backlog and things like this, and maybe this is a talk question and not a tag runtime question, but, you know, when I look at the backlog, there's a bunch of projects that are queued here for incubation and uh, like due diligence and things like that. Um, do we need volunteers to sit and and go through these? You know, obviously I can't, I'm not asking to work on the Wasm Cloud um, uh, proposal because it's my proposal, but you know one of these other ones, Artifact Hub or Open Yurt. You know, um, I've done, I did the Cloud Custodian. I got that through incubation, um, and so uh, I'm pretty familiar with the process. Although the process keeps changing, so you know it's kind of like uh, I'm familiar with it at various points in time. Uh, but uh, my ask is, how can we help um, tag runtime? Um, uh, well, how do we volunteer? What 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 do you need help with? Anybody want to take a stab at that? If if I may, I I just want to say plus one. I'm I'm also I'm more of a newbie. Um, you know, to the to the group. Um, I recently sort of uh, got in touch with Rajas on a separate thread, and again, same question. Um, anywhere where we can jump in, help. Um, I see that you guys are pretty clean on the issues. So I went to GitHub issues, and there are just like two open ones. So. Um, I think you're keeping the boat clean. So um, anywhere where you know we can help, I'm happy to jump in. Um, can I share something from my experience? Not as a um, co-chair, just like someone who's like going through the incubation uh, process with Flatcar. And so there are two several things. You know, there's like the due diligence uh, process. There is the security assessment. There's um, the governance uh, assessment, and there is uh, the legal assessment of all the licenses that are. So, from my experience, is the legal and the security assessment are the things that takes um, longest. I mean, but. Our use case is a bit different because it's an operating system, which is a, another scope. So it's not something that uh, was done before. So I, I can't say that this experience translates to other projects, just saying from my experience how it went. So, but like what I'm actually trying to say, to say is I think you could just you, like see what resonates with you and uh, join the different tags um that uh, you know doing these reviews because there's always a need for hands there um for the due diligence i think it, this one specifically needs to be reviewed by uh, the toc delegates and then later it's open up uh for all the toc members and after that it's open for the public so it goes by kind of like a private review then it goes to public review and so I think for this specifically, I'm not sure uh, if there there is like a way to get involved early, but for the other things that there's definitely a need in people. So if you, I don't know, security is something that sparks your interest, there, there's definitely need there. Um, if it's like, you know, governance or whatever, there, there's um, there's definitely a need for, for, yeah, people who are interested to help. Yeah, and yeah, I would say like incubation also typically comes from the TOC. 
Uh, so the TOC asks the tax for reviews. So once we get those, we 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 uh, we start working on them. So we may need help with those. Uh, but right now, I don't think we have anyone in the queue for tag run time, I believe. So whenever we have one, then you know, for sure we can we we can ask folks here to help out and and reviewing that specific project and providing a recommendation whether that project should go into incubation or not or graduation. Uh, so that's that's one area that folks can help out. And I think another area where so Liam, one area I think in your interest is WASM. So it's maybe reaching out to projects that can get involved with the CNCF and maybe this meeting and they, they can come and present related to WASM. One of the things that the TAG wants to help out is with the growing the ecosystem and, and, and getting people to know what people are other people or other projects are doing and how they can interact with each other, right? So the more uh, exposure uh, they get, I think they 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 can help the ecosystem. Does that make sense? Uh, absolutely. Um, I've got two. Um, uh, if I could get screen share permissions, I got two things to show on that maybe that I think would be um, uh, kind of amusing. Um, these yeah. are I show you two uh, two things from the um, from the keynote um, that Bailey Hayes did um, here. Uh, so the first is uh, let me show you the Wasm landscape here real fast. Um, so you know we've tried to you know take the Big Ten approach in building it, um, and so this is you know what you see when you visit Wasm landscape, although. I'm quite sad uh, that when you um, apply, you know, the filters and you, you know, look at CNCF projects, you know, this very quickly falls down to just a very small number of projects that are actually in the CNCF. But I'm very hopeful that, you know, that a dedicated WASM landscape is um, in some ways unnecessary because as we tried to point out in the keynote that, WASM was just being integrated into a lot of the, the landscape. Um, and this was a view that just tried to capture. And what I love is, you know, the incubating and graduating projects, you know, the platformy type tools are the very first things that are embracing WASM um, as a plugin. You know, they're integrating WASM itself as the, you know, as a hosted platform. Uh, so, you know, they, they're becoming platforms within platforms um, with WASM. Um, and that is like the slam dunk, one of the slam dunk use cases. Wasm Cloud obviously um, is more designed for running, um, you know, complex microservices. Um, that's what's different between us. And there's a whole bunch of Wasm runtimes that focus on the fact, I apologize, I have a new puppy. If you guys can hear her crying, uh, she's uh, uh, she's just a little needy. Um, the... Um, uh, a bunch of the use cases uh, that are being integrated into like the Kublet uh, focus on the FAS use case, which is also slam dunk a uh, use case for Wasm. Uh, you know, think like Lambda, spin it up and spin it down. But Wasm Cloud lets you build like really long running stateful things. Um, think like um, capabilities uh, that need um, to do connection pooling, um, uh, integrate with IAM, you know, renew credentials, security, stuff like that. Um, so we've seen a huge adoption of Wasm Cloud on the enterprise side, like Hockey Stick. It's been insane. Um, uh, all these telcos, banks, you know, all kinds of stuff like that. Um, but I'm really excited by what we're seeing just across the landscape. I do think there is a big opportunity. There's a competing org here, not competing. It's not fair to say that. There's another org uh, called the Byte Code Alliance that is building out, I would say, the sort of like some of the WebAssembly reference engines and tools, but it is not a place for user projects. And I think that is indeed a great opportunity for the CNCF. And that's why we chose to, to land Wasm Cloud in the CNCF versus trying to put it here. Whereas this is sort of like the upstream engine, WasmCon. Wasm, um, 
a WASM time itself is not like a developer project that you could use. It's something, it's a library you can use to build a project. And then WASM Cloud is what packages up and integrates it around. So absolutely, I'll try to um, think through, I'm chair of WASM, Con I'm chair of all the WASM things, basically, uh, conferences. I'll try to think through the projects that are out there and think of others that we could run through Tag Runtime and see um, to see what else we could try to get submitted into this ecosystem. Because there is, um, I think, a lot of great candidates uh, for um, uh, for inclusion. You know, when we um, uh, when we uh, look across the landscape, as we've tried to highlight here, a lot of people are innovating in the WASM space, and we just need to give them the kind of kick in the pants and say, "Hey, you know, the right thing to do is to put it in a foundation so it doesn't end up in another HashiCorp situation." You know, um, where you know we end up. Uh, with forking licenses or, you know, stuff like that. Um, and I maybe it's not fair to pick on HashiCorp, uh, but um, it is, uh, that is just problematic uh, because the ultimate user, the ultimate losers, you know, as, as, you know, Hashi and, you know, IBM and the other players are kind of like, you know, fighting over Open Tofu and those others who are the big losers, are the are the just the developers in the community, uh, but you know projects that end up in the CNCF, we know that those projects are not never going to have license changes. So I think this is a pretty crisp and clear issue for you know why we want to have you know these foundational things in here from a tooling perspective. Um, but I don't I don't I think I'm preaching to the choir at this point, and I, I you know it, it's certainly in this meeting. Yep. Uh, so okay. Ricardo, I hear you. I'll work on the WASM stuff. I'll also hit the talk. I, I do, Danielle, I do know that the, I'm already engaged with the talk. I did want to make sure that I came here first to this group and like publicly said that, said that, you know, like, Hey, I'm, I'm want to show up and say, how can I help? And I wanted to do that in front of the chairs uh, before I went to the talk. So you guys didn't think I was running sideways, you know, just to be perfectly transparent on that. Um, uh, uh, but I am going to the talk because I, I, you know, I'm a little frustrated that, you know, some of the processes have taken so long, but I'm also, I also volunteer in, in the CNCF and I know it's, we're all just volunteers. Like nobody gets paid to do this, you know, like we're all just doing this because we love it and we believe in it. You know, we're all just, you know, we're not, um, mercenaries, we're missionaries. Um, you know, we all like, that's the difference between the people that show up on this call and the people that don't you know, the, the, the people that really believe. And uh, so I, I, I'm not here to complain. I'm here to say, you know, I, I brought a shovel and I've got some time blocked out and I'm going to go dig on some other projects and try to like clear this backlog and get us caught up here uh, so we can make some progress. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. And also on the, so you saw the GitHub issue, feel free to comment on that issue too as well. So the, yeah, 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 yeah. Great. Uh, it, 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 yeah, it's it's been kind of slow. They have a long backlog too, and and they just actually created a new doc that describes the process in more detail. And they have a KubeCon freeze, and but just read over that, and 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 if you have any comments, like uh, you know whether that's too long, uh, just feel free to you know raise it or something. That I I actually brought up the the fact that that you have you hadn't heard like in. Uh, this year, I guess, uh, like the last time you heard was in, in, in November of 2023 or something like that, right? So, yeah, yeah we, you know, we, we've been uh, pushing, you know, we actually, you know, um, uh, actually uh, got, um, you know, like a professional security review done with Trail of Bits, you know, um, who I think is the best for this stuff, the open source stuff, you know, the, which was in the hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know, to do that. And I don't think most projects go to that level on a security review. But we really wanted to have, um, given you know that we're an application runtime um, ourselves uh, for WebAssembly, you know we really wanted to have those that like high bar of guarantee. So I kind of feel like you know we've created a gold standard. Our users that are out public are like Vodafone and Orange and BMW and Adobe. It's like we've got like this gold set of, of folks. Like I'm, I'm past graduating at this point. You know requirements. Um, and I, you know, we just need to, we want to move forward, um, in the process, um, so we can, um, uh, get the benefits of all the hard work that we put into the CNCF. Um, uh, so it is what it is. And, you know, uh, I brought my shovel and my puppy, 
So we want to sit down and get some work done and, um, and hopefully we can just dig this out together. And Taylor Thomas, a bunch of the cosmonic folks are going to be um, a lot more present across the work streams. As a team, we decided that we were going to block out a couple of weeks of work to try to come in and volunteer on other projects with the idea being that if we cleared the log jam, that it would make room for our project to get through it. Because we, right. we know that we're just blocked up and everybody wants their project next. So if we show up and we help and maybe somebody would would see that and be like, hey, maybe we'll help, you know, we'll jump on the Wasm Club um, issue and um, and try to help them get across because they're helping us get across. Yep, that sounds great. Uh, I, I think the TOC is picking up uh, on all of these issues. This is mentioned in the last stack TOC public meeting as well, but uh, slightly changing the gears. Uh, so Liam, you mentioned on like contributing to, you know, getting more WASM projects involved and things like that. Uh, working group WASM is also another great avenue to get involved. Uh, that's that's where uh, Taylor Thomas mentioned. So we, I, I think you're already in touch with them. Uh, so yeah, and just for the wider public over here, like, you know, that's that's another avenue if you want to get involved, like create some outreach, things like that. Uh, for the question that came up earlier around contributing to Tag Runtime, uh, I think uh, we, as Tag Runtime, we just need more outreach. <laughs> I think in a while, this has been like one of those meetings which has had like uh, quite an attendance. Uh, so reaching out to projects, like asking them to pr present at Tag Runtime meetings would be like a great start. Uh, and then at some time we expect, as Ricardo mentioned, like some help around uh, going through due diligence talks, things like that. So yeah, like just reaching out to projects will would like really help us right now. Absolutely, you know, I'm happy to jump in. And um, I just wanted to say that uh, Daniel for Flatcar, um, I was one of the people just shadowing for the security review, and I. Uh, uh, I actually saw the presentation from your team um, about the entire security that is built around Flatcar and it was impeccable. I, I just had to say that, right? Um, I was just starting out, you know, trying to figure out doing the first security assessment. So not surprising, I couldn't find anything, you know, any gaps. But then overall, I think everyone really loved how you had thought through security at every level. So I just, I just wanted to call that out. And... Um, and uh, Rajas, in terms of projects, I'll definitely um, uh, try to see if in the wider open source world, uh, you know, um, we can get someone to come in and present. Um, are you looking just for CNCF projects or um, there's a lot of interesting work happening in the OS and the runtime world. So any other open source project is fair game, right? Yeah, projects which are uh, just relevant to runtime or uh, if, if they're more relevant to uh, operating systems and things like that, we've got like Sean over here, uh, who's uh, leading the working group special purpose operating systems. Uh, we have folks from uh, working group artificial intelligence as well. So this is like a varied audience right now. Uh, so yeah, anything that helps with run cloud native workloads, helps with orchestrations, helps with OCI registries, things like that, that'd be like a great start. Thank you. Thank you for that, uh, Rajas. It, it, Liam, to, I'd um, come in also for uh, for the end users of uh, Wasm Cloud or, or WebAssembly. I think uh, there's a CNCF also, there's an end user board and uh, we can get those involved there. Uh, so how they're, how users are using WebAssembly, for example, the, the open source projects, like how, how they're integrating them into their ecosystem internally and yeah uh, so those are great stories that, that 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 are you know good for the community and and um i think a lot of people want to hear about them and and users also can are free to come to this meeting too and and present to it or projects together with end users so that they can actually evangelize and let the community know what's going on 
So just a, a thought, I think end users coming into the special tag meetings and saying what they're doing with the technology is great, are great case studies of how applicable and you know how people can take what we preach in these tags to production and their environments, which makes it even more exciting. Um, I've been chair of um, a WASM Day and founded it, uh, and then I'm also a co-chair of uh, WASMCon. Um, and I, my personal sort of like guiding mix is to try to do thirds. Um, so I try to get one third um, user talks, one third you know standards and tools, open source, and then one third um, maybe like uh, you know companies or you know, people presenting their projects, you know, or something along those lines. WebAssembly is a little different than a lot of things because there's this third layer that comes into play um, uh, uh, in that WebAssembly is the W3C standard. Um, so we have this first layer. Then on top of it, we have um, the sort of like open source um, upstream engines that are built in web browsers, the Bytecode Alliance, um, and then there's, uh, if we think of this as like the web, um, Linux, and then there's an embedded space. Uh, so think like sub Linux, uh, like Siemens, Bosch, Sony, like those players. Um, and then um, we get to the tools that we have in the CNCF um, uh, or in other places um, and other integrations. Um, and so it's it's a little bit, there's a, that extra layer of nuance with WebAssembly because there are only four standards for the web that are um, at the W3C layer, uh, you know, uh, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and WebAssembly. So it is, a it, at some ways, it is kind of a bit slower moving because things do need to get all the way to the, you know, to that level and get passed. Um, uh, and we have like a whole proposal process that standards evolve through. Um, uh, uh, so, um, but there are, if we look at like Wasm Day, for example, um, you know, we did have some really um, powerful um, use cases presented. Um, uh, we had a big, I tried to pick, um, and the committee, the program committee, I think did a really good job um, getting um, you know, really giant companies out. So we've had like Adobe in the past. Um, this was my favorite talk, one of my favorite talks that I've ever seen about WebAssembly because it was so visceral. Uh, this is a startup that does um, distributed machine tool monitoring. And what I loved about it is because it really embraces the better together story that we're that we've really tried to deliver around um, the CNCF. Um, so uh, half of their stack lives in the cloud. Uh, think like Kubernetes on Azure and AWS and so forth. Uh, and then the other half of their stack um, lives out on the edge. Um, and oftentimes it's too big for, or too small for um, containers, but sometimes not. So they sort of need um, agnostic utilities. And then they walk through um, their adoption of WebAssembly. And the best parts of the talk are when they get into the, oh, I'm sorry, I, I pay for YouTube Red personally, but not on my corporate account. That's somewhat embarrassing. I wish I had my puppy as a distraction right now. Uh, the best parts of the talk are these parts where they get into the architecture and then where they really show WebAssembly superpowers. And it's not just like, you know, they're doing like, um, they've implemented algorithms for like real time machine telemetry. And these machines are on factory floors in like, if the machines went sideways, they'd kill people. You know, they make like airplanes and factory floors and steel and manufacturing. But the absolute best part is this part at the end, when they're answering these questions, and they show this part of their demo where they're, um, they've implemented this stuff in Wasm Cloud. They've got it running in Kubernetes in the cloud um, uh, and sometimes on their customer sites and then on these tiny little devices and they can just move the logic wherever they want it. Just, it doesn't matter to them. You know, like they can just shift the microservices anywhere across the application mesh and it just works. Uh, it doesn't matter the CPU architecture. It doesn't matter you know, um, the region, the availability, uh, it was really powerful. Um, and it, it builds on all of these value props we've been adding in WebAssembly, um, uh, you know, for the last um, you know, decade uh, to get here. So um, I, uh, we can have these teams come and present, but I would actually point you at the sort of like the playlist first, um, where you can see, you know, we picked, uh, we had like the cryo team talk about integrating WebAssembly in, 
you know, into the cloud native landscape. Um, we picked uh, Orange as a big French telecommunications company, the biggest of the big slow moving, tra slow moving traditionally companies comes in and blows people's minds deploying WebAssembly, you know, around the world into set top devices, um, a little tiny startup moving super fast, um, and then uh, some CNCF projects. And then we had some new standards with like Intel's working on web GPU and, um, uh, and stuff like that. So we, I, we try to be very intentional in the way that we, we run our program. Uh, so I would ask maybe start here. And then if you have additional follow-ups, I know, I know these people would love to come and share their story or participate here, um, yeah. uh, 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 to go, to go from there. Yeah. This is, is great. I think, uh, I think one thought that I have is maybe we, we have a page or, so we can, uh, we can have a more targeted page for web, web assembly on the WASM working group, for example, or within the WASM working group page, we can have uh, maybe a little story around the, uh, some of these talks and then the link to the talk so people can actually uh, share to the talk. And yeah, and then, and then, and then if, the, if some of these end users want to like uh, elaborate on some of these things, they can actually come in and present too. So. So that's also an option, right? And and they can also present in the WASM working group uh, meeting. So it, I don't, I think both of them work. Yeah. Uh, and the keynote that Bailey did was great. Uh, this was her slide that I shared earlier. This one, um, you know, this was her, you know, like part of her big delivery around, you know, the adoption of WebAssembly. This is her deck um, that she's presenting here around like, where is WASM? And it's been honestly hard to keep up with. At WASM Con in June, we're going to do a version of the slide is sort of going to be the comprehensive landscape to show, you know, we're going to do a version of this for the fortune 500, um, a version of this for like, um, just how big has WASM become, you know, Amazon prime video runs 2 billion devices on WASM. Like WASM has slowly just taken over the world in some, in some cases, it's just shown up ubiquitously everywhere. Um, uh, but it's, it's a bit hard of a story to wrap your brain around because as a virtual machine, people use it in three different ways. They use it, um, you know, they embed the virtual machine into their project, like Envoy, like Cryo, like Kublet's doing. Um, people use it as a standalone virtual machine, like what Wasm Cloud does, like what Amazon Prime does. And then it's also already built into, into your browsers. Um, and what was hard is that for the first 10 years of WebAssembly, there wasn't a standard that kind of unified those, those three domains. Um, and so people would write code using the WebAssembly standard, but it would work in the web and it wasn't really intentional about how it was portable. What's changed, and I think what's driving this hockey stick is WASI Preview 2 or WASI P2, the next version of the standards, uh, gives us a thing called a component. And what a component is, is a sort of like what is that portable unit that works across all the domains seamlessly. It's it's a, an abstraction that says, I want file open and a browser implements it like this and Linux implements it like this and embedded implements it like this. So when I'm coding, I'm no longer coding essentially to POSIX underneath the hood or to you know a set of web APIs. I code to these abstractions, these contracts that are are delivered differently under the hood, um, and it's a, a very powerful model. Um, so that's at least what we see. You know, when we look at the Fortune 100s that are signing deals with us, that's what they're telling us why they're doing it. Is they're like, we like this standard. This solves a lot of our problems, um, uh, and uh, is what is getting us over the line. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for all the, uh, this, uh, Liam. Yeah. So, so yeah, that anything that you can help out, just, uh, reach out to any of us. Um, uh, you know, I, Taylor reached out to me, so I'm happy to help. Um, also with, with this group, you know, anything related to projects or related to end user stories or to how we can grow the ecosystem, how we can make, uh, different teams work together, how we can create yeah. standards, you know, so. Uh, yeah, at the end of the day, everyone is uh, interested in open source and um, growing the community. And yeah, and one one of the interesting topics is that that you mentioned is that a lot of uh, a lot of end users don't want to be tied into a specific vendors. So you talked about the licensing, the HashiCorps, the 
the Elastics or the, what's the other one that changed the license? Uh, uh, Redis. So they didn't, I mean, they want, they want to be able to have an, an open source option and not be tied to a specific vendor. So that's one of the things that I see in a lot of, a lot of end users. So we I, can continue. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I think I think we need to tease out a little more carefully here um, open source versus foundation um, because open source is what we have seen um, uh, has been, uh, yeah, I think it's been abused a little bit, um, you know, where people are being enticed into um, a comfortable relationship. Um, you know, if you look on the CNCF Slack, you know, the policy is there are Slack channels for all of these tools, regardless of whether they're in the CNCF or not. And I don't want to, you know, do, you know, name specific vendors because I like all these companies. I like these people. Uh, but what we've seen is, is that open source is not the same as foundation. And we need to, I mean, clearly communicate that. And, and make sure that teams and people understand the consequences. I think I think the enterprise buyers and, you know, like the enterprise architects that have been around for decades uh, and people that have been in the industry for a while have really nuanced understanding and get this and look for that as like as part of their checklist of, hey, if I'm going to build a platform or a tool, I want MIT licensing was the previous checklist. And now what people look for is, you know, I want MIT licensing in a foundation because then it's not, you know, I'm not going to end up with this forked community here, which is what we have now. Um, and I think that's that's unfortunate that, um, that that's the kind of business strategy du jour is to sort of like build an ecosystem uh, and then take it, then try to just capture it. Um, but it's, but that's, but that's what people have done is, is, you know, they've seen big companies do this successfully is, you know, start it and make it like a, use open source as a honeypot, um, but then try to close, close it off. And to me, that is the opposite of what we're trying to do in our ecosystem. Look, I run a company. Yeah. I, I've run multiple companies. I did Brozeek. Yeah. I was the first Kubernetes company, cloud custodian. Um, so I think, you know, like I get it when you're, like Cloud Custodian and Capil and Travis over there, they run Stacklet. You know, there are 20 companies that build on Cloud Custodian. But the reason why Cloud Custodian has become the lingua franca of governance and the FinOps Foundation trades, you know, like if you're in the FinOps Foundation and you want to rule, like you just get a Cloud Custodian policy. The reason why that's happened is because it's in the CNCF, right? And because of that community. And it would be devastating to the project, but most of all to the users that have made those investments, if that were not in a foundation and somebody were to fork that. And I think we're seeing that now with the blowback on um, you know, Tofu and a Terraform. And the only thing I had a giggle about was whoever was the brilliant genius that named Tofu somehow figured out how to get T and F into the name and F and U. Uh, I was like, wow, like that is a, that is whoever named that needs to get the Nobel Prize of, of names uh, for their project, uh, because that was just very creative naming. Um, and I, I think it's just sad that that, that has happened um, because ultimately the, the losers are the two communities are now apart. Right. And it's just going to mean that they're not going to work, work together. Yeah, and and the projects are gonna diverge. Basically, they're not gonna be the same in the future. So, I think the end users are gonna be the ones affected, right? So they're gonna be, you know, uh, left to, you know, uh, have a uh, have a choice, right? You know, whether to go with uh, Terraform or Open Tofu, right? And 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 they're gonna be uh, different things, right? So they're gonna have to pay Ter uh, Cash Corp, or they're just gonna try to invest in Open Tofu and 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 see if that ecosystem evolves into uh, what they want to use in the future. Yeah. Well, any any other comments? Uh, thanks for all this, uh, Liam. So yeah, let's let's, uh, let's keep keep working together. I'm good. All right. Well, let's keep the conversation going in Slack and um, hope you enjoy the rest of your day.
Bye-bye. Have a good day, everybody. Bye. Bye.